Good morning VC, it's Steve Whitty here um, with a little video because I've got some of, the, some of my recent finds, this is volume 55, hope everyone's well, um, 55 subscribers now so you know, really happy to have things are going there. Um, as I say, I don't know if it's going to be a quick or a long one, I'll try to keep it as brief as possible. Um, majority of these finds are pound or two pound um, been quite lucky with my local record store I had a few and I sort of um, just went in and just delved and I thought well, I'll, ta I'll take a chance on, on some of these so first up it's Adam and the Ants and it's his Kings of the Wild Frontier this is I believe the second album but this was the album that my, um, gained popularity um, just before that, Adam and the Ants basically had been band pinched um, uh, by Malcolm Clown to form uh, Lou Lethem to form Bow Wow Wow. He teamed up with Marco Peroni and took on a, a I would say, a poppier route um, with, with the music. He incorporated the Burundi beat drum beat with two drummers. Um, Merrick and uh, Terry Lee, I think, um, and and came up with this. This is a very good album. Well, my sister had it when she, um, when we were kids, and she used to play the um, play it to death, mainly because it may have been her own <laughs> one of her only few albums. But yeah, it's uh, you got single dog eat dog, amp music, Kings of the Wild Frontier. Um, yeah, it's, um, it, it, it's a pop it's a pop punk album. I think uh, uh, it certainly saw the direction he was going in, and it paid dividends. Um, but, you know, from from 1981, they were the biggest thing in the UK at that point. Um, so it's uh, and then after after his Prince Charming album, he, he just carried on solo, carried up with Mar um, Marco. Um, I think he's touring this year, Adamant, so it might be worth checking out. Next up, this cost me two pound, and such a clean copy. This is the Bee Gees, Children of the World. Um, you've got you should be dancing. Um, oh, that's the big single off here, and Children of the World, and the sort of image that um, oh, see see that yeah, that was sort of used. Um, there was a, there was a, in the nineteen eighties. There was a mock. Um, Somebody took the, took the mickey out and called themselves the heebie-jeebies and used that image with their hair. Uh, the comedians, um, which I don't think the Bee Gees appreciated. Um, but you know, for what it is, seventies pop, it's a good it's a good album. They were you know moving in the right direction. You're coming up towards Saturday Night Fever and everything. Right, as I say, I like pop and I like cheesy pop, and I make no apologies. Uh, picked up this. Excellent condition for a pound. Close to you by the Carpenters. I believe it might be the second. Oh, um, might be the second. It'd be the second album, I think. You've got we've only just begun on it. Um, they've, uh, um, they're doing versions of Reason to Believe and Help. Um, and then getting it closer to closer to you. Um, sort of like classic wedding songs of the seventies, I suspect. Um, yeah, on the B side, we got to do a version I've never fallen of again. Um, it's the Gilda, another song, maybe it's you. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's good pop music. Ultimately, and yes, in the seventies, it may not look tip in co co comparison to what was going on. But yeah, you know, Karen Carpenter did have one of the great, great pop voices, and I found another one, and I've got a song for you. This is. Um, and on here, Song For You, which was written by Liam R Russell. Um, you've got Top Of The World on here, Goodbye To Love. Um, actually, one, one great, a great guitar solo at the end of that. Um, I Wouldn't Last A Day Without You. And then, you know, it's just, again, just great songs on there. Next up, again in the pound bin, this is Carl's second album, Candy Out. Um, 
cost £2.33 in um, WH Smiths at the time. Um, yep, yeah. it's got Let's Go on it, um, All I Can Do, um, Double Life, Shooby Doo, Candy Out. It's, it's, a, um, it's, a, it's again, I like that album. It's the first time I really listened to it. I never really listened to it on CD or anything. Um, the cover, I think it's sort of like to do with like Playboy, which is the idea of um, David Robinson, I think, I believe. Um, yeah. Produced by Roy Thomas Baker. Uh, so. This one, this cost me £5. And I, th I went into the local settlement store. Um, and that's just on the off chance, because I've been in there, and it, normally it's Mario Lanza and all that. But you know, I thought, I'll, I'll have a pop in. I haven't been in for a while. And I found this reissue of Shades of Deep Purple. Um, this came out, I believe, I think 1981 or something like that. Um, and it is, it is the first Deep Purple album, but it's un under what's known as the Harvest Heritage um, reissues. Um, and it's, I'll show you. Instead of like the normal Harvest uh, green, it's in black. Okay. Um, and at five pound, I thought, you know, I'm going to take take a punt on this because, to be quite honest, if it was to find originals or like this, it's just, just expensive. And it's, it is the first album. Um, got little notes on the back written by Jeff Barton of Sounds, of Sounds Mag, uh, magazine. Uh, yeah, it's a um, yeah. You got the cover. You got the back, which was the cover of the. Of the original album, yeah, I'm pleased to find this. It's a a good album for what it is of that period. Again, for a couple of quid, this was Depeche Mode's um, singles eighty one, eighty five. Just recently had a new album out, so they've been all over. And this is just like the pop stuff, um, starting with Dreaming of Me, New Life, which I particularly loved. Um, just can't get enough. So you can see the direction once Vince Clark left and when Martin Gore started to write the songs, how much darker the vision be has become. And I can see why. Um, they gradually became more popular, particularly in the States. Haircut 100, another 80, 80s pop band. This is their debut album, Pelican West. Um, that's the band on the back. You've got here favourite shirts, Boy Meets Girl, Love Plus One, uh, Fantastic Day. They were the singles off here. Um, Nick, which is Nick Haywood on here? No. Yeah. Nick Haywood was the main songwriter. But basically, um, but basically um, he struggled to find to deal with the fame and. Had a, had a nervous breakdown, but during this period, the band was forty. Just so weren't interested anymore, so they sort of kicked him out. Um, uh, Nick Haywood, though, he had, 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 had a, um, a solo career in the uh, in the mid to late eighties. I don't think he ever felt comfortable with 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 the fame game. Haircut one hundred released another album that suddenly disappeared. They've been back together, and there's sort of like talk that they may come. To, um, um, reunite and re-record, but nothing's ever really come out of it. Um, Elton John's Greatest Volume Two, in excellent condition. It's a, this is a reissue. Um, yeah, you can tell by the, the DJ Emirates label, a reissue for uh, I think again from the eighties. And on here you've got. Really, really sort of like the second part of the 70s is his greatest hit so you've got the bitches back loose in the sky sorry seems to be the hardest word don't know breaking my heart which he was number one single in the uk with kiki d um someone saved my life tonight philadelphia freedom island girl grow some funk of your own benny and the jets and ends with pinball wizard now this album 
nobody's going to be heard. It's called, it's basically Conks on Pax, and it's their album, Caramel. Now, this is uh, sort of an ambient type um, dance, and to give you an idea, Conks on Pax is a, Scot it's a Scottish um, artist called Tom Schofield. Sch 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 um, I think that's how you pronounce it. And it plays, and it cost, this cost me nothing. Uh, Pete in the record store gave it me, and the reason he gave it me, there is a problem with the pressing. I don't know how well it's going to come. When it was, it was poorly mastered, and it pressed slightly warped on A side, but that's okay. On the B side, I don't know if you can see, just if I can put one finger as a guide. There's like a fingerprint there on the on the mastering, so side, track one on side two is totally unplayable. So it's actually worthless. Um, having said that apart, you know, if you're happy to forego to side one, I was more than happy to have that for nothing to give give it a go. And yeah, play it. The rest of the album plays okay. Um, and it's not a bad album at all. For what it is, it's not really my cup of tea, but I'm quite enjoying it. In the pan bin, you know, Madonna's True Blue. Um, I think it's a sound started to... Um, side one on this album is actually very good, because I think she started to broaden out. I think the big charge she had was, was like a virgin, and the stuff that followed immediately afterwards, it all sounded very samey. Where side one on True Blue, she opens with Papa Don't Preach, Open Your Heart, and White Heat, and then Live to Tell. Yeah, three of those were great singles. So two ain't so ain't so ain't so great, in my opinion. Um, you got Where's the Party, True Blue, Natty's Lambanita, Jimmy Jimmy, Love Makes the World Go Round. Well, you know, you could see her sound was starting to change, and it's from from that pure pop. She was starting to um, look at different subjects for, for writing. Robert Palmer, Secrets. Again, it's cost me a couple of quid. Album. I don't even remember when this album came out. Nineteen seventy. 1979 Secrets, and the best known track on here is The Bad Case of Loving You. Um, I'm trying to remember who wrote this, who wrote that song. It's not a, a Moon Marty uh, wrote, that, was, was, wrote that song. And yeah, if you remember Robert Palmer, there's a lot of covers on this. You've got Andy Fraser written a song for him. I'm trying to think which one. And Andy Fraser had written Every Kind of People, which um, Rob Palm had a great hit with. Not a bad album, not not his best. I think um, when Clues came out a year later, his, his sound started to imp improve. And he's... This record I saw a lot on the BC um, recently, and this is Elvis's Elvis Country. Um, in I'm 10,000 years old. This is a reissue from 1981, I believe. Um, I like actually the way this album sort of um, sort of comes together. You've got the tracks, uh, Snowbird, and there's a whole lot of shaking going on. Um, so, and but as this song finishes, you then get a snippet of like a country western, Elvis doing a country western before it goes on to the next track. So there's no silent gaps on this album. Um, used to say I've seen it a uh, few people. I think Elvis Barn guy. Got himself a mint copy of this or whatever, so I thought at a pound I'd give it a punt. And it's not not the worst album in the world. It's not your best, but it's it's agreeable. This next album I've seen a lot off in the pound bins, and and my dad used to own this album. The Shadows, Twenty Golden Greats. It's very. I think it's not. I don't think that Hank Marvin and his guitar sound. Is very underestimated in the history of British pop, rock and pop, and, and Shadows as a group. Um, they were about really the most popular between 1960 and 1963. 
Um, songs like Apache, Wonderful Land, FBI, um, not the number one singles. But, you know, Hank Marvin had that guitar, you know, that twangy tremolo with the Fender Strat. And he was the first guy in Britain to play a Fender Strat, um, Cliff Richard, through the shadows. But and then imported one for him. And they thought it's because James Burton, because they were big fans of James Burton, they thought he must play the best guitar that was, which was the Fender, they thought was the Fender Strat. So obviously they found out later he played the Telecaster. But um, using the tremolo arm, um, went through the Vox and, you know, it just gave that clean sound. And it was such influence on guitarists or, you know, around the world. Even Neil Young's a big fan. Um, you can see Rich Canada and Neil Young. I think he even, even went, went to the last ever shows. Just a couple more records to go. You know how much I like this band, Slade. I picked up a copy of Slade Smashes. This came out in 1980, and this was a sort of cash in on the fact that they'd started to chart again singles wise. And it's got all their all the popular stuff. Come on, feel the noise, my friend Sam. Far, far, far away. Cause I love you every day. Gypsy Rocky. Thanks for the memory, Bangy Man. In for a penny. Squeeze me, please me. Which is probably is my favourite. Mama, we're all crazy now. Look what you've done. Take me back home. Let's call it quits. Give us a go. Which is an awful song to homage of football. Merry Christmas, everybody. How does it feel? My baby left me. That's all right, Mama. Get down, get with it, and goodbye to Jay. It's in the early 70s, they were the Bees Knees. And somebody else that was the Bees Knees is Mark Boland. This is Mark Boland Collection. This is one of these um, collector series, and it's quite heavily water damaged, the cover. Um, you can see from there. It cost me a pound. It's a double album, and it sort of focuses on. It focuses on really the, st the stuff we recorded with per uh, Steve Peregrine took. It's 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 all the early uh, the late sixties stuff. You do have um, Wider White Swan, and you do have Jeepster, which was a nod to the seventies. But I think maybe that was put on just to try and get people to actually buy buy the record. Um, but on here, Red Hot Mama, Strange Orchestra, Chateau in Virginia Waters, Mustang Ford, Graceful, Fat Sheba, Deborah, Stacy Grove. Salamander, Palaganda, The Travelling tra Tradition, Chariots of Silk, The Seals of Seasons, Cat Black, The Wizard's Hat, She Was Born to Be My Unicorn, Warlord of the Royal Crocodiles, Woodland Bop, Dove, A Beard of Stars, Elemental Child. You're talking about something that was reading a lot of Tolkien at the time, and that sort of fell, fell through in those early albums, early Tyrannosaurus Rex albums. In a sense, it should have been more called Tyrannosaurus Rex than T Rex. So, that's the list of my recent finds, so I hope you enjoy that. If you like what you've seen, just feel free to add, add a comment. And if you like, you know, again, if you like what you've seen and you want to subscribe, just click the subscribe button. Hope you enjoy the rest of your Sunday, and until the next time, take care, be safe.